Blog Talk Radio. Good evening. <clears throat> All praises. Good evening. Good morning. Good afternoon. However you come by way of hearing this, good day. Shalom to you. All praises to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Um, tonight, the name of this lesson is The Consciousness of Your Conscious will show you the wisdom of our Father's light. It's a mouthful. I'll say it again. The consciousness of your conscience will show you the wisdom of our Father's light. That is, that's a tall, a tall feat to understand one's consciousness, to be conscious of one's consciousness. Because, you know, from back in the day in the 80s, we were told, you know, conscious, conscious hip hop, you know, conscious music, conscious rap, consciousness. You know, this consciousness is key to understanding who one is, overcoming guilt, overcoming shame, being conscious to be able to atone, to be able to um, repent, uh, to to be able to be humble enough, you know, to uh, find the truth. And one thing's for sure, we have come a long way um, in such a short amount of time. And that's not done haphazardly. That's done subconsciously to make us conscious so that we can be conscientious of the truth and who we are and where we stand within it. You know, we have uh, seen, well, we have heard and read a lot of information. We have dealt with the historical knowledge and understanding, biblical history. We have dealt with these things uh, initially. We have, um, we can see errors in people. We now have, uh, we then went from, you know, the 66 to the 80, from the 80 to the, to the NAG, to the Pseudepigrapha, uh, to the Jashers, Josephus's, you know, to the Book of Mormon, to the Seal portion. And all of that was our preparation. All of that was our preparation to get to our consciousness. We had to deal with all of that history, deal with who we are in terms of where we are and whose we are historically to even understand the consciousness because some brothers and sisters are are caught in uh, the varying um, lower levels of the consciousness and they continue to, um, you know, live there, thrive there, think there, consciously and bondage there because knowledge increases, so therefore we have to continue to ascend. We have to move forward. We have to get to the point where, you know, where Esau and these nations have been trifling, I mean, straight up, straight down trifling. They have done, I I dare say no, because I don't want to use an absolute, but they have done minimum good things to us, for us, about us, very minimal. That's all true, and that all can, you know, give you an ulcer of anger and subconsciously put you right where they are, air state of consciousness. So if you are still dealing in a subconsciousness of, people's uh, angst, people's anger, um, seeing things not as a learning step-up tool, but as a flatline tool to ensure that you feel emotion, to, to ensure that you are emotionalized on the what was. And that's 
that's that's no easy feat because that's a that's another level in the in the in the uh, ladder of Jacob's ladder. It's another level. It's another rung. You know, you got to get past these levels. And the consciousness is the key nowadays for us because that is what we are preparing for. As a lot of these, uh, I remember four years ago, four or five years ago, all you heard was black, white, Puerto Rican, Haitian, didn't matter. All you heard was prepping. You got to prep. You got to get the food. You got to get this. You got to get your bug out bag. You got to get, uh, you got to get to the hills. You got to get to the mountains. Well, none of that matters when the earthquakes come. None of that matters when the floods come. None of that matters when the rats come. None of that matters if you can't use it at the time that you need it. But the Father has instilled in us now a consciousness to understand, hey, it's not about these material things that is going to diminish, but it's about the consciousness of preparation, the preparation to understand what that looks like. Now, I'm I'm going to give an example of what that looks like today, like right now. There's a sub, uh, you know, we all heard sub going down to the Titanic, which in and of itself is no coincidence, and it is a it is a statement of intent from the Father. It is a sub that went down to the Titanic. Now, um, the Sister Hebrew Widow made a very good post about um, the sub and with the Titanic and who did it and, you know, if it was an iceberg or, or not. You know, we're not going to get into that. But the reality is, is that the Titanic sank, and now a sub with these billionaires, this money, is sank as well, has sunk as well. Okay, and it's our the 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 irony is that um, you know, there's nothing that anyone can do about it. There's nothing that man can do about it. You can't. Oh well, let me get Aquaman out here, and Aquaman gonna go the orca help him out. No, then it's not gonna happen like that. That's not what this is about now. It's because they did not prepare. They prepared themselves through material means, and they have lost themselves via the material means. And this is what we're gonna start to see more of. Interesting enough. A lot of the uh, Abraham's um, prophecies are coming to fruition. They're coming to fruition. You're starting to see now where wild beasts will be their grave. You know, we don't know what what happened in this situation. We don't know if if uh, some, somebody something cut it, cut the wire, and it's just, you know, you got so many things happening in. Um, in their politics, that their consciousness doesn't even allow them guilt or shame. This is what a lot of the people within the nations, most all the nations, are are dealing with now. Now they may come out with a good, you know, a good front, uh, look looking like they know what they're talking about, but deep down inside they don't, obviously, because. The system, their system, the situation, the world would not be in the chaos that it's in today if they're subconscious and they're con- if they were conscious of their consciousness. They, the, the world wouldn't be in the in the in the dire straits that it's in now. And I mean, we haven't even gotten to the BRICS situation yet. Another, you know, conscious, unconscious spirit upon the nations, especially the United States, to where they're not even they are they're not even paying attention to them them not being the king of the hill anymore. They're 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 falling down the hill and they still think they're the king of the hill, talking crap all the way down. You got a president who's sitting up trying to proclaim um, everyone being woke. Yet the hijack of the wokeness is our word. That's what the Negro in America,
America coined. Bro, be woke. When you go over there, be woke. It was a term of um, 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 information. It was a slang term for information to make sure that your eyes are wide open, to be aware. And somehow, you know, they got it this whole month, you know, they hijacked the, the, the rainbow, the colors. They, they hijacked um, our whole understanding of the word of awareness, our awakening awareness, and look at them. The more they do these things, the less they're con- – the more they do these things, the more their conscious will be seared. And if you don't have any consciousness – at the end, there's no way there is there's going to be no way for you to come back. You would have to restart all over again and and who knows if this is the last like like the restart we don't know if this is the restart we don't we don't know if the father's saying all the people that have transitioned up to this point within the last Seven years, we don't know if the father says, hold up, no more going down. We don't know that. But what we do know is, is that the the earth itself has a consciousness, and it is now. That's why I said the earth will help the woman at the end. So now the earth is, is, is going against what is happening, what people are doing on it. It's no longer happy. It's no longer allowing itself to be used. And is that no coincidence, coincidentally, no coincidence that at the time where we are starting to have our bring our consciousness to the forefront, the earth also is bringing its con- her consciousness to the forefront and doing the same thing. You know, it's just like... Um, um, you know, when Cain and Abel, when Cain killed Abel, um, Cain was trying to, and this is the book of Adam and Eve, Cain was trying to, to bury Abel, and the earth kept spitting it out. Spitting Cain out. It was like, nah, 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 don't, don't, don't put this on me. This is what's happening. Nah, nah, don't put this on me, man. This is what you have done. You must atone for what you have done, not only to me, element, but also to yourself. This is where it comes back to the consciousness. And this is really the the fundamental piece of understanding to one, one must have a conscience in order to atone, in order to even repent, in order to even have understanding. I cannot believe and this is just me, I cannot believe that Joe Biden, that Nancy Pelosi, that Hillary Clinton, that Bill Clinton, that Trump, that Bush, that uh, Truman, that uh, FDR, that, that JFK, any of these leaders around the globe or the flat earth, however way you see it, does not matter, any of them have a conscience. I, can't, I cannot believe that the nations would have a conscience because if they did, they wouldn't do the things that they do and have done. That's the interesting part about uh, Daniel's, um, I mean, Nebuchadnezzar's dream that Daniel told him about in terms of the Gentile nations, the Gentile man. You know, because if the head was, was Babylon and they had a conscience, then they would have told, uh, you know, Persia, Medo-Persia, all the way down to the revived Roman Empire, hey, you got to have a conscience. But instead, what each Gentile nation did, especially Greece and Rome, what they did was they snuffed out the consciousness, which was the people, which was righteousness, and they chose unrighteousness. They chose wickedness. Remember, the world, the world was given into the hand of the wicked. So, <laughs> excuse me. So, if the consciousness, conscience, righteously conscience, then they would not have done 
the things that they've done. Uh, again, you know, we don't have to go all the way back to slavery to, to, to the 18th, uh, to the to the uh, to the 19th century. We don't have to do that. We can go right to the 20th century within the last 70 years and say, hey, you could not have had a conscience if. You were lynching people. If you were gator baiting people, if you were leaving, you know, devils punch bowling people, if you were making laws, redlining, if you did every, you know, and and and, and your church obviously has had no conscience either, because they condoned it. Matter of fact, they spearheaded much of it. Consciousness, the consciousness is the key. And so as we've read so many books, historical, scriptural, you know, and the whole time is so interesting to me because the whole time that many of us were reading, you know, and you got to think for a minute because this is the one thing that they said not to do, that we could – this was the thing that they said you are not allowed to do which was read. And the moment we start reading, they lose their mind. So the moment that we gain our consciousness back is the moment that they lose theirs or gain it. Now, before I go any further, I want to, you know, what is it? Isaiah 14, 1. Let's, let's, let's read that real quick because that's, that's something that a lot of people are not understanding or able to to, to cope with. Um, let's do because let's do this. Uh, so many of us already know this. This is nothing new to us. But I'm going to read it for the for the for the father will have mercy on Jacob and yet and will yet choose Israel, which is Jacob, and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. So now that cleave word is key here because it's something interesting I found, which which I knew but I didn't know. And when I was reading what I'm reading today, the con- my conscience was like, hey, you need to look at this. I started, I started listening to my conscience, which is my soul, which is my spirit, okay? I start. I started listening to it. It, it became louder. I'd always. I, I've, I've been listening to it, but it was really loud and really. Um, it was indicative of of what I heard. It was a a loud voice that said, "Hey, you need to." And I was like, "Okay." So cleave, cleave is a word. Cleave is a word, and this this is so interesting to me because it's it's just like the Gentiles who have no consciousness to see see something and do the opposite. Now watch this, cleave. Cleave. Now I just read Isaiah. Now in this situation, Isaiah said, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Now we're reading that as they will cling to or they will uh, come to or be part of, right? 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 But cleave means to split or sur- or sever something, especially along a natural line or grain. Split, divide. So we read this in the context of, and they shall cleave to the house of Israel, the stranger, right? Now, we know that th- in this situation, cleave means to cling to, right? Because it, the, 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 the other word in here to give us – Reference to the cleave is joined. It says, and the stranger shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Israel. Okay? Now, cleave, spelled C-L-E-A-V-E, has two meanings. Matter of fact, it has two opposite meanings. So when we, we, we've been sitting here saying, you got to cleave to us, you got to cleave to us, and they're saying, we won't cleave to you because they're thinking in their mind because subconsciously and, and, and consciously, they don't have that understanding. So they're thinking divide because that's what their actions are doing. 
They're dividing themselves from us here at the end. And it's just not, and I'm not just saying that it's, you know, so-called Esau or white people, whatever that madness is. I'm saying everybody. Because there's a ton of Negroes out here that when we say, when I say, hey, you know, this is the word, you know, have you read this? Or, no, 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 you don't know what you're talking about. You you just need to do this, and you just need to stick with here. You know, it's a 66 books. Everybody's still on this Jesus kick, and it's like, look, stop worshiping that man, our brother, and act like him. If you act like him, then you can be with him. But instead, you want to stop and worship him, effectively making him an idol. This is the dilemma of the subconscious and the conscious, or the unconscious and the conscious. Because if you hear what Christ was saying, you would not say, well, shoot, that's it. You know, he said, he said, do away with all the laws, and, and, and he said, just, just worship him. That's not, that, that's not how this works. This is, he came to show you how to be conscious conscious in a world of unconsciousness. That's what he did. And it wasn't for them then. It wasn't for them in the 1600s. It wasn't for their renaissance. It wasn't for our Christianity and our black church. It wasn't for that. It was for now, for us to understand how to be consciously aware, awoke at the end during the darkest times of the unconscious human being. This is where we are. And, yeah, we know that church is a demon seed. We know the church of Mahan is, is just it's going to burn badly. We know that because it has done, it has created the unconsciousness and the unconscionable <laughs> being. It has created the madness, the chaos of the conscious, of the spirit. And it's going to pay for that. It set up the issues. It set up the Hindis, it set up the uh, uh, Islam, it set up everything it's going to pay for because all it has done is gone throughout the earth and made the conscious unconscious. How so? Because once you give someone the material, listen, you know, uh, I was listening to Brother Judy the other day, and he explained that they were were uh, TSA, if you will. So whenever you wanted to go into a, a, a kingdom or a land, you had to go in and you had to, um, you know, go through customs and, and TSA. And they said, well, you got books, and, you know, we'll, we'll give you, we'll give you X amount of dollars, and then you know, we'll give you the copy and we'll keep the original, right? So them doing that has created the unconscious material because now the knowledge that was kept that you initially was consciously keeping, you gave up for 30 pieces of silver, for 30 pieces of silver. And this is the, this is, this is the, the trajectory that many are on subconsciously. So while they are, while many are wallowing in the unconscious darkness, some of us are consciously seeking the light. And you, can, you have to be consciously aware in order to see it. Otherwise, you are blind. This is where Israel was. This is where we were on a physical and a spiritual level. But today is different. Things have been quiet for us. We have been still. We have seen things from a perspective that we have never thought we would ever see, ever. Our minds and our consciousness has been open greatly. And the Father is saying, see my light. And as we try to 
go back unconscious the ones that he has called can't do it and i'm not saying that we saying you know i don't want to deal with this no i'm saying sometimes we got to deal with the with the world deal with the material sometimes we want to rest but even within our rest and our and our dealing with the with the world we're being conscious as we do it and it's it's like second nature now and as we now become conscious you know some of us are still you know wanting that pound of flesh don't get me wrong you know righteous vengeance is is righteous vengeance tastes like ice cream whatever ice cream you like ice cream and whatever pie you like it's the sweetest taste going righteous vengeance nothing nothing like righteous vengeance to get your blood going to make you feel good into darkness we slip unconscious because consciousness says you know yeah, these people are going to get, they're going to get, payment will be made regardless. So what I need to do is not not want that on them since it's going to be given to them anyway. I need to make sure that I am prepared, consciously aware. Because it's it's a battle. I'm telling you, this thing is not hard. Not I mean, this thing is not easy. This is the this is the biggest hurdle that we are about to undertake, conscious people, as a collective consciousness. This is the biggest hurdle. We are at the main point. We are at the door. We're at the precipice of knocking on the door. We have to be prepared consciously, and we have to consciously prepare. And all that's to say what I was saying, you know, cleaving, because now that we, and we all do this, this wasn't something that we didn't understand, you know, a cleaver divides and cuts, right? But we have to understand that consciously many are not where we are. Many won't ever be where we are. And that's okay, but we can't, we can't, you know, we can't boast against them. We can't wish it against them. We have to be purified, and in our purification, we have to consciously prepare. That's our spirit. That's what we're best at. We're best at being conscious. When we are woke, we are conscious. That's why they want us to go back to sleep because when we when, when we've been telling them, hey, this is what you've done, they go, oh, well, you know, we don't want to talk about, you know, you, you, you people always want to take something, or always want to say y'all need something, or then talk about slavery, but yet Germany, what last week said that they're gonna pay uh, reparations of a billion dollars to the issues, the eighteen year old issues is now, come on. Somehow, ish, the 18-year-olds in 2023, so, you know, what, those that were born in the 20s? And, I mean, yeah, the 20s, 2000s? Somehow, somehow they deserve reparations for what? For what? But that's my unconsciousness coming again because, see, that steers me up. Because when I say, hey, what about the, the, what about, you know, what about my 40 acres and a mule? What, 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 what about that? And all I get is, you don't need that. You, you don't even know what you're talking about. But that was so long ago. But, but the hypocrisy stinks. So I have to be consciously awoke to realize that these people are about to pay. Because it doesn't even make sense anymore. The argument does not hold weight. The stars are are aligning. The the weather, the winds they're dodging is is putting the wood to these people, to these nations. The earth is spewing them up, spitting, sucking them in, and spitting them out. 
The war is just washing them away. Their systems are breaking. And for me, I'm going, well, you know, I need to be woke enough to be able to get out the way. And the only way that I'm going to be woke enough to be able to get out the way is if I am consciously awoke within the spirit. And as long as I'm walking towards the light of the Father and not being unconscious to the things that are going around, that's going on around me, I don't see how I could lose. I mean, literally, I don't see how I could lose. Now, doubt, doubt is a, is, is a demon as well. As well. It, it, it creeps in and gets you, um, you know, unsure. It puts you in an unsure state of consciousness, doubt does. It's just like, hey, come walk on this water. Oh, I can do it. Wow, oh, I might drown. Doubt. You know, he said, ask of me and I shall give it to you. Okay, Father, I, I need this car. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna get the, I need a car to get to and from the work because this is how I'm going to survive now. Okay. He's given, he's putting, he's prepare. he's putting things in motion to prepare you to get the car and it's taken, you know, three days later because we all impatient. Three days later, we're like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to get it. Well, and then, then you don't get it, and then you're mad at the, God, at, at the Father because you weren't prepared consciously to be patient. You were not dealing consciously in the virtues. You chose doubt, which is a vice, which opens the door to vice because now you don't get it. You feel some sort of way. Then you act out on that, and it could lead to anything, it's smoking, drinking, you know, fighting, you know, whatever. It's a psychology 101 because we can see this because this is what we've been through. That's why this ain't hard. That's why it's not easy to talk about, but it's real relevant to talk about. Everything I talk about, I've dealt with. I've gone through. This ain't nothing. I'm not, I'm not pontificating like a, like a heathen. Oh, what? You know, I didn't go through this, but I can tell you. I've never gone through this, but I can tell you what to do and how to do. What? You shouldn't get reparations, but I'm giving reparations to them. I'm going to give it to the Siberians. I'm going to give it to the Ishes. I'm going to give it to the, uh, to the Asians. I'm going to give it to everybody but you. And when you to say something about it, I'm going to scoff at it because I can't have you understand. I can't have you conscious, consciously aware of what we've done to you and take money from me. You can't have it. If I'm going to give you money, you got to be unconscious. This is the dilemma. Because if we're conscious with material gains, you already know. We, we, we've already seen it. We've seen it in history, Wall Street, Black Wall Street. Everything that we've touched turned to gold. We are the Midas touch. So they know that can't do that. They, they cannot, it is not, they are not allowed to do that because we are not prepared consciously to manage it. We have to be able to manage the, 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 the world, our world. We have to manage our resources. I mean, you know, if we, if we had it all at this stage unprepared consciously, shoot, fools would have uh, a, a gold, a golden suit with golden tie, golden shoe, golden socks, golden hat, golden glasses, golden teeth, golden eyes. There, it, it, it'd just be ridiculous. Because that's just that's just how we roll. We roll like that because we shine bright. And if we shine bright consciously, then the knowledge would be satisfactory. The wisdom would be satisfactory to us. But when we are unconscious, we think even like, because we've been destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's easy. All right. I want to just bring this into full because this is, this is, this is what we're seeing psychologically from the nations right now. This is guilt and shame. 
Guilt involves the awareness of having having done something wrong. It arises from one's actions. That's guilt. Shame is the painful feeling about how one appears to others, to oneself. And this says without having done anything, okay, which we know the shame that, that, that the biblical shame um, or righteous shame is when you know you, you wake up, you get conscious of what you've done, and you feel ashamed for doing it, not doing nothing, okay? Uh, but, again, this is, this is not a – their the nation's uh, website, Psychology Today. So their psychology is set up to help them not feel shame and not feel guilt for what they've done to, to us, of course, because everybody else, they, they, they seem to, to be able to muster the strength to, to feel guilt and to feel shame, but not to us. To us, because we're still in their minds three-fifths of a human, no, this is not everyone, okay? This is not everyone, but it is the majority, okay? And that's soon changing too, but I just wanted to – Put that out there because we have to be we have to realize what's coming down the pipe and what's coming down the pipe is this shame and guilt will come to the forefront and when that shame and guilt you know because they talk to Christian madness all the time you know it's okay you know we I have I have listened to them but I'm looking at them going really really you know that picture of that that little that little brother the little baby brother on Instagram he's just giving you the look like really really this is what really uh, you know because they talk a good. They they talk a good gap. They they all want to talk about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But at the end of the day, it ain't got nothing to do with what you're saying. I don't care. As a matter of fact, I don't care what you say. I don't want to hear what you're saying. I want to see your actions, because consciously, that's what I'm going to judge you on. And yet, I'm allowed to judge you because your fruits will tell me whether you are loving me properly or not. And 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 and. <laughs> I have to be consciously aware so that I don't get caught up or ensnared with your madness or chaos. And it don't matter your color. I don't care who, what you look like. I'm just saying, if you're saying, you know, Jesus, I love Jesus, this, that, and the third, and then yet you ain't doing what Jesus said, you ain't even, you're not even studying, you're not even practicing, you're telling me that the laws are done away with, which is acidine. Because the natural law can't be done away with. God, the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, is all about order. So what What would you mean? Ain't no laws in order? Foolishness. So anyway, I digressed on that rant. But we move forward. All right. So as I was saying earlier, we've gone all the way to um, uh, to – you know, esoteric books, you know, various forms of understanding. We've been able to discuss things. And then that's something else. Chat, these, these AI, is it? <laughs> so they ain't, got no, they ain't got no consciousness, so they would instill, they would rather give their consciousness to a computer, to a Lexus, so that a Lexus can then turn around, and what's going to what they don't get is that because it's a computer, it's going to tell the truth. It's going to rationalize the common sense approach to the truth. If they put all this information into it, it's still going to tell the truth. For instance, I heard I was I was watching um, one of the shorts uh, on YouTube, and it was talking about this guy was talking about Alexis, and he was like, Alexis, what, what, what color was Jesus? And Alexis went through, you know, went through all of the information it had and said, well, most likely Jesus was a dark-skinned person. You know what I'm saying? So even in their attempt to create another God in their AI, it's still going to, it's still going to tell the truth. It's still going to judge them. They're not prepared consciously because they're unconscious. This is what I keep talking about. But anyway, I digress. So uh, for me, I've, I've read a lot. I've, I've done a lot of studying, and I am still nowhere near, you know, um, an expert by no stretch, advanced expert by no stretch of the imagination. 
However, the Father had me, as I have been doing the last few weeks, talk, reading the book of true life, uh, and, you know, that's the Third Testament. And to me, because everybody reads everything and they get different things out of it because our purpose is all different and everyone's different and, and, and our understanding is different, our consciousnesses are different. However, as long as we all seek the truth, then the collective consciousness is one, Okay. So I've been on this book of true life, and I can tell you that it has just been talking to my soul. You know, uh, Brother Yaquab and I have been talking about this, and it's just been so fascinating. Like, I can't even – I can't get enough of it. Like, I really want more of it, and it's – and it's. Um, I just I, – I, consciously is where I'm at now. I'm consciously aware of my consciousness, okay? So what I did today for tonight – what I, what I did was I said, well, let me go into the Book of True Life and put in here everywhere, put in the word consciousness, and let me just read a couple scripts out of it, okay? And, 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 and when I read these, when I read these, view it from your consciousness level. View it from your consciousness level. Because this isn't, this isn't me telling you what you got to do. This isn't anyone. This is just, hey, I'm just a facilitator. I facilitate the Father's information as he's given it to me. He's allowed me to facilitate it to his people, okay? And we all are that way, you know? No one's bigger than the Father, you know, although you got a bunch of preachers and teachers and priests and, you know, you even got some camp heads that are, that are uh, puffed up. Because they know something that the father, because the father is giving them knowledge, they feel puffed up. But that's not me. I'm, I'm just a, I'm just a, shoot, I'm just a, a, a bum. I'm a, I'm a straight bag of bum. I, I'm just going to and fro, trying to get to the father. That's all I'm doing. Okay. So, but this is, but see and hear this and and listen to this from your conscious perspective. Okay. First one, this is right, see if I can find which one. This is teaching three forty one. Look at that. That's where it begins. I should have known. Okay. This is volume twelve, the book uh three forty one. And let us begin. Oh, when you are not sure of taking a firm step, wait. Gather all your strength. Analyze all the fruits so that you can advance in your evolution. I will bless each of your determinations. I will prepare your spirit in such a way that it clearly understands the dictates of consciousness because you will not remain indifferent as in these times. Many tests will be presented to you. You will have to fight with many obstacles, but you have already passed by the first step, by the first test. You have already been unknown by your own because of me. You have lost everything and have been compliant, but in me, you have earned everything. I have given you the peace of mind that your loved ones could not give you. In me, you have found peace of consciousness and spirit. So what can you fear if the world points to you, if it mocks you? Hold on. Bear with me one second. Revelations 2 and 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art are rich. We are rich because we have a richness and consciousness of spirit. My law is in each of each one of you. Positions also, the latent gifts, the senses and prepared powers, the eyes of the spirit open, sensitive consciousness, because it is the divine spark 
so that you can understand the hour you live and you can pray, watch, and work according to my commands. I have prepared and clothed you anew with the greatest gifts. My light has illuminated your heart and your mind and and in your consciousness. You feel the responsibility that you carry within my work to rise as envoys of my divinity, making known to men the peace they have sought in different ways so that in my name you may give life to the spirits who have died to the life of grace through the centuries. For this I have called you, people of Israel, and my word has echoed among you like a sounding bell through the spokesman. But not all of you have understood, but those who have interpreted my will have risen to me to receive the mandates that have to run in life, to know me and to know themselves to free themselves from the bondage that their spirits had carried through the centuries. Sounds like um, reincarnation to me. That is why every day I come to teach to you, Israel, so that you may carry my law written in your heart. I will speak to you through consciousness, and I will discover for you what is the commandment of my law that you have not fulfilled. And in this way, step by step, you will become the regenerated people and full of my wisdom. I mean, this is the good news. You know, I started, uh, I started, well, I should say my first video here was the good news one. And, and my purpose is to bring good news to Israel. We know what the heathen and the Gentiles are doing, you know. Lots of it has been hidden, and there's plenty of brothers and sisters out here bringing that forth, you know. I'm not, I'm not, I I can, I have, um, and and let me just say this, you know, I went to, I went to their colleges and universities, and my studies was history uh, with a minor in forensic anthropology. I did that trying to find me, and every step of the way, I found me in anthropology, but was told it wasn't me, but I never found me in their history. And the moment that I found me in our, or the moment that I found me in biblical history, my ultimate mind was blown. I'm not seeking, uh, you know, a deity. What I'm seeking is the truth, because for so long in looking for the truth, I never found it. I was always told to just shut up, sit down, don't worry about it. And it aggravated the hell out of me. And as I got older, I started trying to understand it. I read Zachariah Citron's book. I understand the Anunnaki and Planet X, Planet Nubaru. I, I read these things. I, I, I definitely had that foundation. So to me, when the father woke me up, tapped me on my shoulder and said, wake up, little 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 brother, wake up. And I woke up and I rose up and I said, well, here I am. What do you need from me? And he said, I need you to explain this. And I did. And now every every time, and this is just me, but every time in this walk, since he first woke my consciousness up, every time that it became, I, I reached a wall to where I was like, that I'm still hungry, but I'm still thirsty. I'm going to arrest the development, but I am still thirsty. Oh. Oh. You know. So every time I came and, and, and ate and drank and I said, I get it, I got it. And I said, but, Father, I'm still thirsty. He, he, thirsty. He just put something out. He did it, he did it with me. Uh, with the nag, he did it with me with the Old Testament pseudepigrapha. He did it with me with Jasher. He did it with me with the sealed portion. He did it with me, Book of Mormon. He did it with me with this Third Testament. And it's just mind-blowing to me because every step of the way, I have been able to connect the dots. Even in their science, in their in their uh, approach to um, evolution, I I I was the guy. 
I'm in class. I'm in my my um, and uh, they're talking about the fly scene and fly scene and and they're talking about um, <laughs> they're talking about Homo sapien and Arthropithecine rhombus. How Arthropithecine rhombus and then all of a sudden Homo sapiens and they said it was like a ten million year ten million ten million year gap or something ridiculous if I, if I can remember. And I was like, huh, that's interesting. So you mean to tell me that this humanoid uh, rhombus, this orthopithecine humanoid uh, being, didn't have any understanding, no reason, no nothing, but then Homo sapien comes on the scene, and it seems like he all of a sudden had reason. He, he looked at his hands and said, he or she, whichever, Lucy, you know, whatever, looked at, looked at its hand and said, I'm going to use, I'm going to go and get something to put in my hand to build something with. So I raised my hand and I asked questions. I asked the taboo question that I didn't know was taboo, but I asked the question that was on my heart that my consciousness, that the father said, ask, because at that point it was a, it was a, um, eye opener for me and later on in my life I can always reflect back on that to show the error of the heathen Gentiles. I ask, but well, hey, you, that seems that seems like it could be the point in time where God blew reason into his creature, his creation. The teacher, nevertheless, the teacher just looked at me perplexed. Like, what you talking about? And of course, it's white dude, glasses, short, you know, uh, pontificating. And I just raised my hand. He said, yes, and I asked the question. And he said, he just gave me a perplexed look. And then this dude, that because I sat in the front of the class, the auditorium, and and the, and the dude, uh, this this white guy was in the back, and all of a sudden I get a tap on my shoulder. And I get a piece of paper handed to me, and I'm looking at the at the professor. He's looking at me. I turn back, look at this, look up at the top because I don't know who sent it. And this dude looked at me and like, like you know, gave me like, "What's up?" You know. And so I open up this piece of paper and it said, "Don't bring religion into science." And I said, "Put okay." You can't bring common sense into forward. It was it was a chore. It was a chore for me. And then as time progressed, the father said, you know what? I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to show it to you. Since, you gotta, since I let you see this information from their perspective and you are still thirsty, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you see the truth. And I did, and I went on, and now here I am at the Third Testament, and I'm saying, hey, these people, many of them, are unconscious. They are not. They are not meant to be prepared. They are meant to have someone help them when they are at their lowest. And as you know, many of us have gone through many things, and we have seen many things, and we have dealt with many things. And, and each time we do these things that we have been doing, we gain information, we gain knowledge, we gain wisdom. And for a long time, for me, I was like, well, what am I going to do with all this? You know, I, the, that that ordeal that I went through in my anthropology class, because I went in wanting to be a history professor, that changed right then. I was like, I'm done with this. If this is what I got to – if I can't utilize common sense or bring in the things, because my dad was a minister. I would already been dealing with all this. If I can't connect these this, this, these dots, then to hell with it. I'm done. I'm done. And I was done. And so now the father says, you just began, son. You just began. Little did I know, right? So here we are, I digress for a minute, but I had to say it because a lot of this a lot of this is 
our, it, you know, it's talking to Israel, <laughs> talking to a specific people. And that doesn't mean that it's always bloodline. It could be spiritual. It could be conscious Israel because we don't know at this point. But what we do know is that if you're following the laws, if you're understanding and consciously giving effort to follow the Father's laws, his laws and the two greatest laws, then you can you can probably rest assured that you potentially are Israel, probably are Israel. And, and that's, you know, treat people the way you want to be treated and seek after the truth, the Father, right? If you're doing those things, I mean, you're not killing, stealing, raping, lying, and cheating. So, you know, come on. Welcome to the welcome to the nation. Welcome to welcome to the neighborhood, right? So that is why every day I come to teach to you, Israel, so that you may carry my law written in your heart. I will speak to you through consciousness, and I will discover for you what is the commandment of my law that you have not fulfilled. And in this way, step by step, you will become the regenerated people and full of my wisdom. But for, th- but for this, you will have to spiritualize each day, removing material, material materiality, no, materiality from you because I do not want you to be the exaggerated spiritualist. No fanaticism is a, no, fanaticism is abominable before me, and that is what I have come to remove from you. The consciousness will tell you tell you how you should live in harmony with everything. Isn't that where we are right now? My Father's mercy rests on your spirit, strengthens it, and tells it, learn from my teaching, because you are still the weak child who does not feel my strength. Isn't that where we are? At every moment, I also speak to you through your consciousness, to make you recognize your mission. That's what we keep saying, you know, and Brother Judah says it all the time, you know, his mission is that, you know, we all got different missions, and this is the truth of it and the facts of the matter. We're all, he has scattered us all throughout his creation in order for when he uh, um, blows the shafar and we stand at attention, he can utilize our energy, our light, to be a beacon to others, the rest, because not everybody is going to be have strength of consciousness all the way to the end. I mean, you know, we we want. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, we got to get out of the, you know, righteous vengeance because we don't want to be caught up with them. You know, we we don't want to be ensnared with their judgment either. You know, so we've got to be able to stand still enough so he can utilize us so that we can be a light for those that he is still waking up. He wants all of his creation saved. But it's like we would have healed Babylon, but Babylon don't want to be healed. So some people are not going to be saved. We know that. Salvation is for us, and they get to cling to it as long as they, as long as the Father allows them to do so. But he's got to use us to do that. That's why Christianity is so wild to me now. I look at it like, ooh, it's a vice. It's clearly a vice to me because there's nothing being edified. There's no consciousness in it. You know, even even back in the day when my dad was was preaching heavily, you know, he I was like, man, it's the same thing over and over. It's like a, a curriculum. What are y'all doing? Can, is there something else? I mean, I know there's more into this Bible. This is what we do. You know, Christmas comes, then it's Easter, and it's some past, you know, um, Passover, Easter, and then nothing, and then they talk about, you know, Paul, and then, you know, that's it. You know, and never talk about the Old Testament unless it's David. You know? And I'm like, dang, I mean, at, at some point, I've got to feel comfortable enough 
to feel like you're feeding me. And they always, you know, I'm feeding, I'm the shepherd, and I'm feeding the flock. Well, are you really? Are you really feeding the father's flock to allow their consciousness to grow? Or are you deadening their consciousness and making them unconscious and asleep? This is what the Christians have to really, really do some soul searching to recognize. Well, I know my pastor, and, and I go to this men's group, and we do this, and we talk about this, and we pray, and then, and then, and then, and then, we get on these prayer lines. Blah, 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 blah. Listen, you're not supposed to be praying all out for everybody to hear you. That's not, that's not that's not written anywhere. The prophets never did that. They always went somewhere and did that in private. They were out telling the truth in the streets. Christ didn't sit out there and, and, and pray in front of everybody. Christ went away and prayed. Everybody does that because that's your time with the Father. It's not for you to be in front of people trying to act like a Pharisee, a Roman. Because that's the, the scriptures are off. So as we respect the scriptures, we respect our spirit, we get a consciousness of understanding so that we can be aligned with the Father's light. It's a beautiful thing where we are. It's just beautiful. I mean, goodness gracious, good. Whew. It is an amazing, beautiful thing where we are today. Again, look how far we've come in such a short time. A short time. And these fools with PhDs and 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 EDDs and all these letters and they pontificating, they ain't done nothing but gurgitate themselves on this supposed New Testament, New Covenant madness that's not biblical. Ah, oh, I can't. I can't listen to him no more. He's talking about my book. Bye. I don't care. That's not my problem. That's between you and the Father. If you want to, and I am digressing, but I must say this again. I must reiterate. If you want to eat off of the tree of knowledge of good and evil and deal with romanized, romanticized spirituality or religion, rather, so be it. That has nothing to do with me. I'm not here to tell anybody what they should or shouldn't do. I'm here to explain each level that we're at. And today we're at another level. We have, we have graduated to another level, and the next level is understanding our consciousness. How conscious are you? I remember back in the day, you know, conscious rap. That's all I wanted to listen to. I was like, man, I can't listen to new NWA. I can't listen to these brothers just always cursing, ranting, and raving. I had to listen to conscious rap, hip hop. Then I was like, I can't listen to nobody talk. That's why even today, I don't want to hear you sing. I don't want to hear your lyrics. I don't want to hear your sorcery. I'd much rather be entertained by the music, by the skill. I don't need to hear you talk or sing. I don't want to hear it. I don't, I don't care about it, to be honest. You know, now some, you know, you get your Stevies, you get your Earthworms and Fires, you get some dudes, some women that are out there today that have something to say consciously. Then I listen. Other than that, I ain't got time. I don't have time. And, you know, this is this is where... The Christians are having a having a hard go at it because they're being convicted. It goes back to what I've always said, you know, you've got to self reflect and self correct. This is what we've been doing over the last seven years. If you don't think this is what we as a people in this world have been doing. We have been self reflecting. Shoot, who are we? Okay. Self convicted. Shoot, I used to do some crazy things. I can't do that no more. Forgive me, Father. Self-corrected. I am now wanting to do the right thing. Okay? Now your consciousness is woke. Ah, well, now it's about the LGBTITH 
G E L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y and Z people. No, it is not about them. Those people are those people, and they will be those people, and that's between them and the fox. I could care less. But tell me that my awakening of consciousness is in line with them. I'm dodging, as uh, Kermil says, as everybody says, I'm dodging these hijacks. Where's that for 20 to drop? Dodging these hijack cats. These guys, these people are out here trying to put landmines on us so that they can try to trip us up to hear what we stand so that they can gravitate to it. And it's funny, that's why they keep ostracizing us because we're talking, we're talking real spiritual talk here. We're talking real historical things here. We're telling the truth here. They can't cleave to us when they're talking that craziness. Excuse me, they can't they can't cleave to us and come over and try to hijack us. They ain't no ain't nobody gonna be able to come over and be like, Yeah, you know, those Israelites, we uh, are just like them. We suffered the same fate. Uh, no, it's not going to happen over here. You're, you're not going to have that platform. You know, you stick over there with Oprah and Sharptons and Jessies and all those boule Negroes, but don't come on up. Don't come against us because over here we don't, we don't, we don't play that. You get called out. You will be called out. Sure, you can come over if you're trying to self-reflect. Self-convict and self-correct. If you're trying to do those things and you're trying to do the right thing and you're trying to move forward and you're trying to repent and you're trying to atone, I dig it a dog, get on over here because this is where you need to be. But if you ain't, you're going, to be, you're going to be called out quickly and you may even be destroyed. And it's not by our doing. You will destroy yourself. You will either be conscious or destroy yourself unconsciously. Just where we are right now in time, in this, in this confluence of time, this, this, configura- this configuration of time, of Roma- romanticized time, of the Father's time. You, we're not in that time anymore where they get to call the shots. It's just not. And get, get away with it. I mean, it's not. But anyway, I digress. Elijah had prepared you. He had touched... He, uh, Goodness gracious. Elijah had prepared you. He had touched you with his spiritual index before that moment so that all the people were awake, alert, and watching. So at, the, so at that moment of judgment and grace, he would not find him lethargic because Elijah appears in the path of the spirits, always a forerunner and preparing the paths, separating the thorns and stones so that, the, so that my children's plant does not get hurt on the way setting off the spiritual bell that's consciousness to the, to the depths of the spirit to leave you awake of light and hear the voice of him who comes from the one who always tells you, here I am, because the Father is at all times and in all places. I'm going to read that again because this is, this is Jehovah Shai. This is what Christ does. This is what he's done for us. This is why he said, I come to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, He's come, we had to be consciously awoke or awakened so that he can come. As we awaken, he comes and clears our path so that we can see the truth, feed off of the truth, so that we can get grow, we can grow bit stronger, we can have our consciousness strong. This is why um, uh, they can't come against us. This, this is why, because Christ is moving in front of us. He's already here for us. He's doing this for us. He, as long as we wake, as long as we stay awake, move consciously in the spirit, righteous, Christ clears our path. That's why Jojo Magoo and Trump and all them, they fighting themselves. That's why um, the, the camps stay over there dealing with, they fighting, they in fighting with the, with the, the, Christian Malone and all that. No one is coming against us. We're, the only thing that's coming against us is the, is the actual technology because it's an overload. I found in the last few weeks that YouTube is janky. It really is. It's, it's starting to do funny things. 
and you know it's been doing funny things, but it's like on a on a continual now. It's always flaky on me. You know, I got to be patient with it, and I know it's an overload of this information because so many of us are searching for the truth. So many. So the technology today is being overloaded as well. The the uh, the the vibration, the frequency of the technology has to get get up to speed too. So we're sitting here giving it all as if we're going, we need more, Scotty. <laughs> we need more. <laughs> we need more. And the father's like, I got you. Hold tight. Be patient. And that's where we are. So I'm going to read this again. Elijah had prepared you. He had touched you with his spiritual index before that moment so that all the people were awake, alert, and watching. Judgment and grace, he would not find him lethargic because Elijah appears in the path of the spirits, always as a forerunner and preparing the path, separating the thorns and stones so that my children's plant does not get hurt on the way, setting off the spiritual bell that speaks to you through consciousness to the depths of the spirit, to leave you awake of light and hear the voice of him who comes from the one who always tells you, here I am, because the Father is at all times and in all places. Oh, man, you know, the the, the white man wrote that book. Well, listen, white man wrote all the books, and that's something else I was going to say, you know, their argument is the New Testament, the New Testament, New Testament, and their argument is the Greek, you know, the Greek, the Greek. Well, here's my counter punch to them, you know. Um, I was, and this is just my take, my opinion. I was watching Creed. Y'all might, Creed 3, y'all might think it's good, whatever. But I thought it was really weakly done. I thought the fighting scenes was really poor. But the countering was pretty interesting, even though it was kind of poor, choreographed, easily seen to me. But this is the counterpunch to that. If 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 they if the Christians are always talking about New Testament and Greek and the word the the sixty six is the word of God, infallible word of God, then we should all be reading and, and, and learning and hearing and talking in the Hebrew because that's the word of God. That's the infallible word of God. What they did was take the word, the infallible word of God, and they tainted it with their word. They're infallible. They're fall. I'm sorry. They're fallible. So whenever someone is trying to come at you, me, whoever, talking about it's the infallible word, so go whoa, 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 whoa. Do you know Hebrew? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it in Hebrew that I can read? Because. If you're telling me that the Greek is the infallible word of God, knowing the actions of the historical actions, I should say, knowing the historical actions of the Greek and the Romans, miss me with it. Miss me with it because there's absolutely no truth in what they're saying. Yes, they have some of the infallible words of God in their book, but they mixed it with their fallible words of God. And we know this this isn't hard. This is nothing new to us. But anyway, I have let this happen because of the free will that I have given you, because behind all the perversity, all the darkness, and all the obfuscation of men, there is a divine light, consciousness, which is not lost and will not be lost ever. There is a principle that is the, that is the spirit that keeps gave it immaculate. That is the divine seal. With that, I have sent all my children to the path of struggle, and because of that mark, none of those spirits will be lost. See, this is beautiful, man. This is just beautiful. I mean, this is this is where we are. We 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 just have to maintain our consciousness. It doesn't matter. He's going to. He's going to test us. We're going to be, we're going to have to go through the fire, you know. We're going to have to go through some things. Things are not going to be easy for us. But if we endure to the end, 
we will be saved. We will be saved. That's so huge to me. Like, that's, that, that, I don't know about the rest, but that's what I'm after. I'm after salvation. I'm done with this, you know, you know, you know, this madness that I got to deal with. I'm done with, I'm done dealing with a, a, a trifling, um, degenerate, reprobate thinking world. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of these TV shows. That, you know, what, what gets me is, Everything there is no originality in the Gentiles, which which tell and we know this right. They weren't even original in their own in their theology, right? But there is no originality. Everything that they are doing has been done before, and it's in our face. That's a that is a telltale sign of the demise. Excuse me, of their kingdom when they have to regurgitate things that they did before to us while we were unconscious to have us believe that they have, they know everything. And they, it turns out they don't know shit. Turns out, look at that, they don't know shit. These, these jokers don't know jack. It's just like, um, what, what's that brother's name? Um, is it Terrence Howard? He's one who said uh, one plus, they said one plus one is two, but one plus one is one. Cause, or no, 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 not one plus. One times one is one. And he said, no, one times one is two. Why? Because you multiply one. Everything is in multiple. It's a multiple, but they... They have taken a multiple, just like zero times one is zero. No, nothing times something is always something. So the, con- the, the, the consciousness of where we have been living, where they have put us in, has been nothing times nothing. But we had something. So when they came to us, they were like, we got nothing. You guys have something. So we're going to say nothing times something is still nothing because you guys ain't got nothing. You ain't got nothing, but we got something. This is the the, the, the basic bamboozlement of, of us being destroyed for lack of knowledge. But I digress. Let me move on. And the Father gives tranquility and hope to those who who thus find themselves watching and praying, saying, wait, that those who have sinned the most, those who have caused the most pain to this humanity, will later be its greatest benefactors, because they will not die, sin will not die, its materiality will disappear, the darkness will disappear, and the sin of men, and the sin of men, but the spirit guided by consciousness will never disappear, even when it has to pass through great crucibles for great restitution and spiritual purification. Even when I have to go through, even when he he feels that the darkness that surrounds him in his restitution is eternal, even when I feel that the fire of your repentance is hellfire, all this will pass. All this will come out ahead and clean, cleaner than gold when it goes through the crucible. So that's just like us, right? All our people had to go through all of this pain and destruction just for us to come out, come right now. The, 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 um, um, no, goodness. The, the reincarnation of, of his people over and over and over again, all to get to today, to this time, to this awakening, to this conscious awakening. You know, and be free to have a conscious awakening. I should say that. I should point that out because I'm sure, I'm sure it, the, the 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 day after our people were being destroyed, they all they all were like, Father, we are sorry. We repent, but it's too late. The motion, the cycle was in motion, and it was already put in put in motion. It had to finish its course. 
and the course is finished when the father's consciousness overcomes creation. That's the beautiful thing about all of this. That's the beautiful thing about all of this. When man began to live in the world, he met a spiritual life full of purity and innocence. But I ask you, do you think that I was satisfied with the purity of those creatures, purity that came from their ignorance of knowing? No disciples, through that ignorance, the Father could not be known, understood, or loved. Because of that lack of spiritual merit, none of the attributes could be valued as divine beings. And I do not want you to be lower creatures subject to my higher will I, or something like machines that you build without will, without a life of its own. That is why I gave the spirit the gift of free will. And I allow matter to reveal the mysteries of human life to the spirit. But to the spirit, I gave, I gave to know through intuition the existence of the Father, the creator. And before the weakness of matter, there was the strength of the spirit guided by the light of consciousness in which are my justice, my wisdom, and my voice. I'm going to stop there. And, uh, and, and so really quickly, this is, again, uh, 341. Uh, I'm sorry, 345. This is 345. I said the wrong thing. So, I, so basically, I went into the Book of True Life, Volume 12, 144, control F, and I looked for everything. I looked, I searched consciousness, and I was just reading through. <laughs> and I want you to see how that flew, how that flowed. I was talking unscripted to spirit, and look, everything that we were talking about, as I looked through consciousness, flowed in made sense. That's how the Father's working right now. I'm telling you. Brothers and sisters, we are at the precipice of a completely new level. We have leveled up like super, super, super Mario Brothers. We have leveled up. We're at the point now where things are not as they seem, but they are seen in a higher being. And that's where we have to maintain to continue in our walk because things are going to get difficult, but the difficulty will not last long as long as we stay consciously awoke and connected collectively. Because the, the, there will be a time where, you know, ain't going to be no uh, Internet, ain't going to be no phone. So that's why now it's time for us to get this understanding in us. And, the, and, and, and it is. I'm, I'm going to say this. It is in us. We just have to awaken it. That's why this word right here, this consciousness, this is awakening us. When you hear it, you start to see. And, and, and you know what's funny? What, what, what's funny is we're not trying to belittle people. We're not trying to make people feel bad. But we're not going to lower our level. We have, we, it's, like, it's like we went up the escalator to the fourth floor, and someone and one of our friends is like, hey, man, come on back down here. We, I need you to come back. And we're like, sorry, dude, you need to come up here. You know, back in the second era, back when, when we were unconscious, we would verbally move up. And then somebody said, come on back down here, man. And then we go, all right, I'll come down. Come on. And we get caught up on the way down or once we get down. We got caught up because of the decision that we made to leave the level that we were already on and supposed to be on. But today we get to listen to our conscience. We get to hear it. We get to be led by it. We don't have the Gentiles. We don't know. We no longer believe the Gentiles and the heathens. So once you don't believe them, they can't leave. I mean, you gonna let a Gentile lead you? Hell to the no, no, no. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Matter of fact, they're not even 
<laughs> Gentiles and heathens aren't even at the level that we are at. So we get to see. That's easy. Oh, I mean, man, you still talking. All right. All right. All right. I'll listen. Okay, man, cool. All right. Appreciate you. Thanks, man. I'll talk to you later. We're not being led by them. Now, brothers can come, and we'll entertain it. Maybe we get caught up. Maybe we don't. But we have to be prepared for all charlatans now, all of them. And so we look at them from their fruits, the Christian church's fruits. So if you're a Negro and you talk in Christianity, what are your fruits? What is the church's fruits? Because that's how we are, and I'm using the word judging because we have to. We're not judging them. We're not. We're not judging them like the Father is going to judge them. No, we're judging them by their fruits because we have to see that you are being led by the Father because everybody talks a lot of ish. So we have to see what's going on. We got to recognize what's going on. We got to dig what you're saying. We have to see what you doing. And if they don't meet, well, it's a wrap. So we have to lead, we have to now be leaders. That's that's pretty much what the father's telling us with our consciousness. Your conscious, sister, conscious brother, it's time for you to lead. And that's the hardest thing because maybe we weren't prepared. We weren't maybe we weren't ready to lead. Maybe we didn't even think about lead. Maybe that was a fear of ours. But you know what? We're going to have to do it. Because if not us, then who? If not us, then who? The Gentiles, the heathens, you want to be led again the way that they lead now? Come on. It's time for us to step up. It, it's the old outcast. Get up, get out, and get something. Get up, get out, and lead, brothers and sisters. Nation, inside out, we have to lead appropriately, properly, consciously by the Father's Spirit. All praises to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Hope this was edifying. Hope that it uh, made sense. Hate to be long-winded, but it is what it is. I wish I could condense this into a concise 30-minute discussion, but it never seems to happen that way for me. But I hope that's not something that you guys get upset about or don't know. But if it is, nevertheless, oh, well. In consciousness, we rule, family. In consciousness, we rule. Stay aware. The Father is with you. All praises. Shalom.